Good morning on this late September Saturday morning and I'm just doing a quick video because it has been very warm and now it's going to drop like 20 to 30 degrees and we may get a huge freeze or a hard freeze. So I was going to record my garden, what it looked like now before the freeze and then we will look at it after. I know I'm going to have to end up pruning the Eden Rose probably. It's just full of blooms right now and doing beautifully. It's gotten a little wild, it always does in the fall, but I prune it, train it onto the arbor for the season. That prevents it from getting damaged in snow. And I'm going to see how my Roseanne Geranium, if it's going to hold up and continue blooming. It's a very hardy plant, but um, nothing has really been prepared for super cold. It's all just in full bloom. And then for it to switch to a hard freeze can really do some major damage on things because it hasn't slowly uh, cooled down so they can prepare for it. Here is my Zinfandel hydrangea, which I have been just loving this spring or this fall. And it's just gorgeous. It gets more gorgeous every day. So we'll see how it holds up after the freeze. And this through here is stuff I need to thin out. So no big deal. Lots of iris I need to um, divide, dig up and divide. My butterfly bush, it's still got a lot of blooms. So we'll see how it does. Ooh, there's a breeze. Ooh, chilly, chilly breeze. You can see here. Feel it coming. Okay, here is what I've been using as a compost box for this fall. I, all my debris from trimmings and whatever's going in there, and then I dump chicken litter on it. And so that will compost down, and I will plant something in that come spring. I may put some roses in there because I've got to dig up a bunch as I'm redoing the back. Now this is a beautiful trumpet vine and I have decided this year that I am going to turn it into a standard or a tree. So that will be an ongoing process. I'll trim it back and train it onto um, a form so that it will then just become a tree. It just always looks so messy rather than just pretty. So here is my side beside my house and there's some roses in here and there's a clematis, a few clematis. Let me scroll this way. There's my studio cottage which I still didn't get to paint yet. I was thinking a nice coral color but it's been up for debate around here. So so here's my side bed here, another Roseanne geranium. They have some roses back there. They're just finishing up blooming. Looks like they're putting on one more bud. That's Bosco Bell, David Austin Rose. And you can see my Black Eyed Susies are going to seed. Um, these ones, I normally leave some up for the birds for winter food, but I have to redo this bed. So I'm gonna pull them out they're, the seeds will fall. I'll still get more next spring and summer. Here's some daisies that need to be thinned. They're getting a little too aggressive in there. My wild, or nearly wild rose. That always does really beautifully in the fall. It prefers it cooler. So it kind of slows down blooming in July, August, and then picks back up as soon as it cools back down. So there's my delphiniums. I need to cut them back and save the seed. Beautiful peony here. I have a bunch of peonies I'm going to put in this bed just because they do so well here and where I have them they're not doing very well. My asters are starting to go to seed. And along here. So let's go to the back. Well, I haven't made it to the back. I just made it over here by the dahlias. But um, Here's the one rose that I did a post on about saving a dying rose and actually it had been eaten by voles to just a nub and look at it now. So all is good. So my dahlias are still blooming. I cut some big ones off last night to bring in. I don't know if it's going to be a hard enough freeze to do them under, um, but we will see. And those Black Eyed Susies need to come out. And there's my Princess Margareta Rose, David Austin Rose. Clematis, 
as my Ni Nike Warsaw, Warsaw Nike, sorry, said that backwards. And my Grandpa Newt Rose and more iris that need to be divided. So over here, excuse all the hoses there, is the pots that I redid for fall for in front of my studio. And I haven't uploaded that video yet. It's pretty easy, it's nothing too complicated, but all I did was add some fall color. The Calibracoas and then the darker potato vine to give it some fall interest. Now the petunias may get zapped with this freeze, so they may have to be replaced. But it's nice that I already have the Calibracoas started and I can put in whatever I want. I do have some really pretty orange violas that would look gorgeous in this and they'll last through the winter here. <coughs> So here comes my back garden. I have been pulling out stuff, plants, all along there because I need to dig out those two roses. They're not doing what I want back here. So I'm going to replace them with something that's evergreen and will cr create like um, a wall of green. And then I'm going to plant maybe those roses up in that box that I showed earlier uh, that's full of debris right now. And for the winter, I will pot them up. I'll just dig them up, put them in pots, and put them somewhere for the winter. Now, I'm not sure what my purple rooster is going to do. It's down there, my Monarda, that was so gorgeous this spring and summer. It, I trimmed it back. It's starting to rebloom. I don't know if this freeze or cold temperatures is going to stop it. That's going to get dug up because it's it gets too tall for that area. So as soon as it goes dormant, I'm going to dig it up and move it. So we can see, us, see here's my hummingbird fountain. And one of the fountains got flipped over by raccoons. They've been getting in it. I guess they think there's something in there to eat or whatever. And here's the petunias in the ring around it. I don't know. If they're going to make it through this freeze or not, we will see. I have some strawberries I would like to put in here, I think. Cosmos. These all came up volunteer. More Cosmos. A lot of times I don't have heart to dig things up if they come up volunteer. I'm saving seed from them so I can seed areas where I think they'd be better. They get too tall for this section. So in the side garden where the tall plants do well, in the side border there back where we saw the other plants then that's where they'll get seeded so i dug out this area i had a bunch of coneflower purple echinacea and it just didn't perform well it, it just always looked ragged and i don't remember what variety it was and i just didn't like it so i pulled it all up and i put in some more delphiniums and there's a ton of foxgloves that have reseeded. That will be just gorgeous. So you see this big one right here. And then as we go over here, here's my red Monarda bee balm. Larkspur that has kept blooming because I kept deadheading it. And then these poppies also I kept deadheading so they kept blooming. I'm letting them go to seed now because I want plenty of seed to scatter. And then here's some more foxgloves. All along here, you will see tons of foxgloves, just as thick as could be. Here's some zinnias I know will not make it through this freeze because they're very sensitive to freeze. There's some foxgloves there. But you'll see all in here, tons of foxgloves. This corner is gonna be foxglove heaven come spring. There's another of the roses that needs to be dug up and moved. Those are Hyde Hall, the David Austin Rose. They they do beautifully. It's just they want to flower to, on the other side of the fence. So I don't get to see the flowers unless I walk over that, that hillside. So we're going to move those in an area where we can really enjoy them a lot better. So this is the back side of where that purple rooster is. And this is my uh, Olivia Rose Austin Rose. The, the partner to it is the one that got nearly eaten to death by the voles, but I did um, dig it up. I put some rooting hormone on the stub of the, what was left. There was no roots left, just a stub. 
and potted it and it's come back. So I saved that rose and I had another one get eaten over in another section and I did the same thing and I'm hoping it will revive too. So they have the voles this year have been just terrible. I'm almost afraid to put anything in the ground, but the deterrent I'm putting down, which is made from castor oil, is working. You just have to put it in an the area. They'll move them from that area to another area. Then you put it on the new area and you keep moving them gradually out of your garden. The downside is it keep you have to keep reapplying it as long as there's a, a problem in your neighborhood with voles. So um, more raised beds is, are going to go in and the bottoms are going to have uh, wire mesh so they can't eat my plants. But that's a work in progress. And then the roses along the back lattice. So slowly but surely, this is the mess before it all gets tidied up. Kind of it looks worse before it looks better. Here's beside my greenhouse. Yeah, lots of stuff going in there. I have some peppers in a planter. They will not get any peppers from them. I just did not have a hot summer, hot enough summer for them. And even if I put them in the greenhouse, they just wouldn't mature because they're just not far enough along. I had thought of giving them down to a friend who does have a longer season than me and see if they can get some peppers from them. Let's see. This barrel was filled just with about everything you can think of. I got a tomato in it, some petunias that were left over from, I had bought several six packs at a wholesale nursery. And this is some sweet peas. This is a high scent, which is my one of my favorite because it, it is very heavily scented. And when I walk out of the greenhouse, it just fills your nostrils with beautiful scent. And this is a, um, what is it? Oh, I can't think of the name right now. It, it, it only blooms in spring. Heavy, spicy scent, tiny pink roses. I'll think of it in a minute. Cecile Bruner, that's it. See, I knew it would come to me. And here is where I am slowly starting to move my tender plants that I don't want to get zapped. I have some geraniums I need to move in here before I cut them back and put them in the basement to overwinter and all of that. So it's just a work of progress, but there's my preview before the first hard freeze of the winter.